time for Manifestation Bathtub, your weekly show about manifestation from a bathtub with your host, Joaquinos. So we have several special, amazing, wonderful, brilliant, magnificent guests with us today. First guest is my sister, Katie. Hello, and welcome to Manifestation Bathtub. Katie Sports Volcano, <laughs> otherwise known as Hecate Volcano. <laughs> Our second special guest is Audrey Glitter Volcano. Ah, I've been waiting a whole year for this. <laughs> 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 also in the tub with us today is Livia the Mermaid. Livia, Livia! Hi, Livia. Livia, how old are you today? She's four. four. She is our youngest guest on Manifestation Bathtub. <laughs> and the lovely, the wonderful, the amazing cook, the creative genius, Ryan Mayer. Volcano. <laughs> Ryan Mayer Volcano. Welcome. Yay. And my mom is actually in the other room and she's watching right now. Yeah, she's invited Hi, too. Kathy. She wants to come. <laughs> Kathy, jump in the tub with us. Billy, you can come in the tub with us too. We're on TV. <laughs> Grandma, if you want to get on TV, come on over. It's a family reunion. We're August in here. <laughs> Grandma's here. August is here. Mm -hmm. So as you can see, our bathtub has gotten bigger this week. Mm. We are in Kit's sister's hot tub today in La Mesa. La Mesa, California. Mm -hmm. And we are all hungover from magma. <laughs> and I don't mean like That's we drank alcohol. Drink. I mean like we have just spent the last five days being the most magnificent version of ourselves, being real, being authentic, being vulnerable, and connecting with each other. How many people are at Magma total? Like 20? I think about 21 or 22. Felt like a lot. So more. Magma was our four day live event that took place in San Diego with 20 people there for four days in a row. Hi Carl, you want to get in the bathtub with us? No. Come on Grandpa. Was Come that meant Papa. as enticement? <laughs> And the magic, the magic of having a big group of people together manifesting things versus just one or two people together manifesting things is indescribable. Can you guys tell me about it? Like, what was the difference for you? Hmm. Well, you just feel like collective energy, and it it makes your energy so much bigger and so much brighter. Like, you can feel it in your body so much more because everybody's so excited about the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, it makes it feel like things happen faster. It happened really fast. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. felt like my emotions were way closer to the surface yeah. because I was feeling everyone else's, so it was easier for me to access my own. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because everybody, it, there was just this buzz mm. keeping everything in here moving. Yeah. If you've ever had a really good uh, collaborator and you kind of bounce ideas off of each other and you feel that energy with that other person in the room kind of like mm. bouncing, 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 almost like you're ricocheting kind of off the walls and off each other, it's like that but multiplied by, you know, 16, 20. 18, 20 people so that you're constantly bouncing from one person to the next who themselves is carrying that amplified energy and it was, it was nonstop. It was beautiful. How many of you guys feel like you got a DNA upgrade? Ooh. Definitely. I'm an X Men now. Yeah, actually. exactly. Yeah, I kept expecting my hands to burst into flames the entire time. And you know what was really cool about it is that it really did feel like a team of X Men. It felt like a team of, of humans who many of us have felt at times in our lives we didn't really fit in with other groups or, or the groups that we were placed in, the families we were born in, maybe. And we found this amazing community amongst each other and we're people from all different backgrounds. There were Christians there, there were agnostics there, there were gay people, straight people, trans people, cis pagans. people, pagan people. I mean, like you name it. It was this amazing group of people, um, artists and musicians and body workers and yoga teachers. And throughout the whole process, everyone was contributing their own special brand of magic. And together we were figuring out you know what are what's been holding us back in life well you know what are what are the secret patterns and cycles that we keep repeating over and over again and how to identify them and then how to choose not to continue those um, and it was there were some moments where I wasn't sure if anyone was gonna come back the next day uh, <laughs> there you were know? moments I didn't want to come back the next hour yeah yeah, I mean, like, we really pushed each other, and, and sometimes that's what it takes there to really get to sure your vision. Back. Okay. Aww. Aww. 
So there are so many hidden surprises. So like, one of the things we were talking about in the event was the power of eight. We're on a show right now. I don't know if you guys know. Sorry. That. Yeah. I'm sick. I remember that together. moment where Katie grabbed my head and went like, <laughs> out she, of my she, face. Like, shoved my head out of her face. Wow. <laughs> yeah, things got a little intense, guys. You got a lot intense. You a lot, lot of intense. intense. Yes. So one of the things she talked about was this book called The Power of Eight, where she talks about the power of kind of group meditation and group intention setting. And have any of you guys ever been a part of like a prayer circle where all of you are praying for the same thing or meditating on the same thing? That's what it's about. Or wishing or hoping, it's all the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so imagine multiplying that by two or three times and having just this, this room full of people with the same vibration, building up our energy throughout the day until, you know, the end of the event after four days, none of us wanted to leave. And some of you guys are watching right now. Hey, Switch. Hi, Kim. I don't know who else is watching. We love you guys. Love you. Yes. I wish you were in the bathtub with us right now. <laughs> I miss you already. So anyway, guys, we're planning our next magma. It's going to be in Europe. It's going to be in Berlin. Ah. And it's probably going to be in September. Who's coming? Who's coming? Who's coming? Yay. Livy, raise your hand. Livy's coming. Hey, are you going to come with me? Livy's coming. Yay. Yeah. Awesome. You're going to go to Germany. We're going to stop in Sweden on the way. You want to go visit Elsa with us? Yeah? Cool. Awesome. Yeah. Wow. So Livia just said that she's going to go to her friend's birthday party from school and that Elsa's going to be there too, which is pretty cool. I think I want to go to that event. Yeah, I'd like to go. Yeah. So, um... So, so what was the other thing you want to talk about, babe? Showing up authentically. Mm, yes. So the thing that happened at Magma is it's we like, created the space where everyone could just be themselves, even if, even if it was like not the most quote unquote desirable self. We were just like everybody show up as you are. And what happened is even when people were showing up and they think they were being selfish or annoying or or too much, it actually helped somebody else get what they wanted. Mm -hmm. And you know, I was talking to Coach Audrey this morning about this because we both had coaching calls this morning. And we were discussing the difference between coaching on the phone versus coaching in person. And I asked Audrey, I said, what's the difference for you? You can't hide. You can't hide as a coach. You can't hide as a client, as, mm -hmm. a, as a coachee. And mm -hmm. you really just, everything is out on the table. And that's when things get fixed is when you're not hiding what, what you really need to deal with. Right. So that was really interesting. And, and to show up as a coach in that way and you know, have to just be fully present and be fully there. And I don't know, it feels like the transformation happens so much more rapidly because of that, which is really cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, it was just like one after another, after another, after another. And I would love to hear what some of you guys who are watching thought of that as well. The people who are at Magma who are watching right now. So what was your biggest breakthrough or what was one of your favorite moments? Um, share it with us in the comments. Uh, what about you guys? What was I want to talk about my yeah. biggest, yeah. yeah. One of my biggest breakthroughs was that for a year, I mean, over a year ago, I started coaching as a client with you guys, and you'd been telling me, come to a live event, come to a live event, this is what is going to make the big difference for you in making decisions. That's one of my loops, is that I can never make a choice. And I've heard that idea of make a choice and then make it right for a year, and it didn't really sink in until I was at Magma, and I was mm. like, wow, I've spent a year, I've done things, I've had fun, I've done whatever, but I haven't made the choice yet. So now I'm, I'm going back home tomorrow and I know I've made my choice and I'm going to figure out how to make it right. And then, you know, I can keep making choices and making them right too. What's the choice really, that you made? Cool. I don't want to talk about it on Facebook Live yet. Oh, so is that the game I've chosen? Okay. I'm going gonna, <laughs> to be an event coordinator in Denver. <laughs> Volcano yeah. movement. So like, okay, so Audrey, I want to know what shifted because of the event. You know, you had this moment where you were like, I'm gonna open an ice cream shop, and I'm gonna open a restaurant, I'm gonna open a, a B and B, and I'm gonna open five ice cream shops, and then I'm gonna be a coach, and I'm gonna run events, and I'm gonna do this, and 
So like what what shifted from you wanting to do twenty five things to making this one place? Well choice? that's kind of the whole thing is like I know that I can have all twenty five things. Mm. I just have to do one first. I yeah. can't do them all at once. So yeah. Yes. Make a choice, do that one, and then all right, maybe next year I can add on a taco shop. Maybe the year after I can do that. Like, Amazing. So it's just being all in on something instead of like spreading my energy out in a million ways. And I know I want to continue to be part of these magma events and coaching, and that's something I wouldn't be able to do if I was opening a restaurant right now. Yeah. So. So what? Where in the events, and how did having a lot of people surrounding you help you make that decision? I actually think it was at the very end of the event when we when we were doing gifts and for three days I had this like little confidence issue where I was like I'm not a great coach like I'm not a good yoga teacher I don't know and then people were giving me my gifts and they were like the space that you're able to hold for us was so incredible and the way you made us feel was so incredible and you just lifted everyone in the room up and I was like this is what I want to keep doing I want to keep doing events on my own I want to keep I want to be able to come to these events and I think it was just feeling that from other people and, and hearing that I do add value to a room like that, that kind of made so much. made the difference for me. It was yeah. really special. It was really, really cool to hear that. And then we've got Kim Marquez who's commented something. Can you scroll down and look? Sure. She said. You got it, honey. The ongoing little miracles that kept showing up. I also felt so supported by so many. I, uh, uh, Kim also says, Audrey, you showed up and gave me so much of what I needed. Oh, that's amazing. Aww, Kim, um, you gave me so much of what I needed. Oh, I think what all of us needed. Uh, so she said, I felt so supported by so many. I also get so much clearer with my vision. I could go on and on. Wow, thank you. Yes, and then, Kim. Um, Mark and Leanne Stewart said, love and light. Thank you. Okay. All right, so anybody else want to share what their biggest breakthrough was from Magma? Katie, Ryan? I had so many. You, you can share a little one. I will, yeah. I will share the one that, that comes up first in my mind because yeah. that seems like the right thing. Okay. Um, I, was, I, I was so excited about everything that was happening and also really um, just really energetically involved and, and, I, and I wasn't feeling very well. I really wasn't feeling too good. And I was just ignoring it. So I was like, no, I'm going to keep pushing because that's what I do. I push myself all the time in it. You know, and then so by the, the last event of the day, um, while we were, you know, focusing on one person at a time and the group was surrounding them and I was trying to be really present, every time we stood up, I fell over. I fell over onto the ground twice. And I was like, I was really embarrassed because I didn't want any... I'm fine with people paying attention to me as long as I'm making people laugh. But if I am... You shell on. Yeah, like... You I mean, look weak. I didn't want to look weak, but, but mostly I just didn't want to take attention away from the people who I wanted to be paying attention to. And, and finally I was like, this is stupid. I need to listen to my body. So I just sat down and just gave love from where I was. And, and, uh, and at the end, I just, <laughs> I was just a mess. I had to lay on the floor. Not even sit, just lay. What else did you do? And like, when you were giving love, what else were you able to do in that moment? I was finally forced at first to receive. Yes. Everyone gathered around and they prayed over me. And that, and I had no choice but to just like, yes, thank you. Actually, that feels really good. Yes, please, everyone touch me. Oh, that's nice. And so, and so that really taught me something and I had to be taken care of on the way home and I had to be taken care of the next morning because the next morning I was still slurring my speech and my lips were numb and it was just weird. And then uh, when I got to Magma and we began in the morning, right before we began with yoga, I was like, okay, you've been trying to do this for three days, do it. So I was like, okay, before we start yoga, please people just check in with me because I really don't have the strength for this and I know I'm going to try to overdo it. And we came up with a safe word. Falcor. Falcor! So we were just like, people were yelling Falcor every now and then or like touching me going, Falcor? I'm like, you're right. I'm just going to lay here. It's cool. It's cool. And I felt so loved and so Aww. supported and so yeah. not like I was a brat trying to take attention away from anybody at all. That was not it at all. And that's what I had been afraid of the whole time. Like, Kate, you're talking about darn children, you know, and it was, it was great. Wow. And my body was like, thanks, thank you. Okay, now go get a hamburger. 
<laughs> and it's funny, it's funny that you say that, because is it okay if I, I get magma on you? Get magma on me, baby. Is that when you're afraid of taking attention, your compensating pattern is to get really, really big and really, really loud and almost a little bit obnoxious and, and just talk without pausing. So it's it like, and this is what we talked about at Magma, was that when you're trying to avoid something, you actually inadvertently go right to it. Bulldoze it. Yeah. Mm. And, and, and you just being authentic and relaxing and not trying to compensate, you gave more than you took. Mm. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I had several people talk to me about it. Right? Yeah. Like, thank you for just being yourself and sitting down and chilling out. And I was like, oh. And everybody in the group that didn't know how to got to learn how to run energy because of you. Yeah. Everybody got to learn how to practice that group intention, which was so, so that cool. That was really bad. Oh my god, yeah. it was so powerful yeah. to be part of that. So yeah. Like, that was a it gift. It was really relaxing. And when you're being your bullshit self, all you're doing is giving people permission to be their bullshit self. But when you're being your authentic self and you're being courageous and you're learning something new, you actually being break vulnerable. people free to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And that's what you did. You broke people free to listen to themselves. Mm. It's really cool. Wow. It was cool. That yeah. feels yeah. like one of my biggest breakthroughs actually was the power of being in this space with so many people who were being absolutely 100% their authentic selves and who were committed to listening in for any moments when they uh, stepped out of alignment from their own authentic selves and sort of step back into old patterns because I think all of us have a tendency to, at, at points in the process, to retreat, to feel mm -hmm. like this is no longer my comfort zone and quick get me back to that comfortable space and get me back to that old pattern and to be in a space where so many people were co collaboratively committed to it really, for me, opened up that space to show up as my authentic self and to constantly be attuning to what I actually wanted and to know that everything that I wanted was going to be provided for. And that was my second mm -hmm. biggest breakthrough, I think, of the whole time together was one of the things that I have made huge steps in my own life on before Magma and that really kind of Magma took to the next level was being able to trust that the things that I really need will be there when I need them and that I don't need to figure out how they are going to get there. Mm -hmm. So there were points where I would be coming to the event and carrying food and not sure if I was gonna show up at the right time or interrupt anything, and I really leaned into the sensation of I'm gonna be in the right place at the right mm -hmm. time, that, that this is, you know, I'm not late, I'm not too early, that-, that Everything is always working out. Things are always yeah. working out, and, mm -hmm. and time and time again, that was true, and I really, intend to carry that forward and to yeah. feel that that trust and that good that source of good feeling mm -hmm. around the back. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So awesome. thank you Magma. Yay, Yay you. Magma! Yeah, really cool. Jeff says so now that is a bathtub. Hi Jeff! Hi Jeff! Jeff don't worry we're gonna message you soon I promise. We got <laughs> we got a lot of work to catch up on with Jeff this yes, week. <laughs> Jeff's job. Can I talk about job. one more little breakthrough also that I had? Yeah. yeah. No. I should have talked about the wall for a moment. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Talk about the wall. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, don't, okay. don't, don't. If you want to experience don't. magma, you have to come. You don't yeah. get to know what happens. You yeah. have to come. Okay. Yeah. yeah. The, like the processes, the exercises that we do at magma, they are top secret. They're transformative. They're and different. if if you knew what was coming ahead of time, you would be able to mentally prepare yourself for it and mentally put your shields up around it and put uh, yourself back initiated. in the box before you entered it. Yeah. So there's, the we specifically ask people who come not to talk about the, 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 way the technique or the, the specifics of the exercises, but they, they can talk about the breakthroughs they get, mm. obviously. Um, but, but yeah, we like to keep the actual exercises, the how, the how we like to keep that on the DL um, <laughs> so that everyone can have their own unique experience. Um, the one exercise that we did live stream um, was the roller coaster. Uh, and I'm wondering uh, if, like, can we talk about that? Let's not why talk about why it, it happened, no. let's talk, or how it, how it came about, but let's just talk about um, what the intent was on the roller coaster. Mm -hmm. So not talk about Disneyland? Oh, yeah, we can talk about Disneyland. Yeah, I think like, we've talk talked about it online about before. Disneyland. Oh, yeah, we can talk about Disneyland. Okay, so basically, the, the, the exercise that we finished with was called Manifestation Disney. 
And the way we came up with this was we were researching the power of ceremony and what, what makes a ceremony impactful, what makes a ceremony actually help people heal themselves. And also, if you want to learn more about Manifestation Disney, you can scroll back in our past episodes. Where we're wearing Disney hats. Yeah. In the bathtub, and we're bathtub. talking about it. So that you can learn more about that there. But essentially, what we realize is that the power of manifestation and ceremony has a lot to do with um, the, the atmosphere you create around it. The costumes, the songs, the incense, the drumming, the dancing, the, um, the sacred se space setting of it all. And we realized this on the way to Disneyland one day. And um, <laughs> Robin says the first rule. Well, you do not talk about magma. Love you, Robin. I miss you. I hope you come to Euro Magma in Berlin. In September. Um, but anyway, so we realized this on the way to Disneyland, and we decided to try and manifest something on a ride because where else is your emotion and your intention stronger? and more exuberant and more alive than on this like magical imaginative mm -hmm. ride in Disneyland. And sure enough, over and over again, it worked. We would get off each roller coaster and we would open our phones and we would see the thing that we, we wanted. We would set an intent came. before we got on and then as soon as we got off, it would come. I'm talking like- They're big things. Six thousand like dollar clients and like our, our own coaches getting their own clients. And what was the other thing? Um, oh, okay, so the final thing, that I decided I wanted to do at Disneyland was I wanted to get together an entire group of people on a ride setting the exact same intention for somebody else. Yeah. And so that was that was the final ride that last time we went to Disneyland, we were on Space Mountain and I just held this vision the entire time. This is about just a little it's about six weeks ago. And I was like, I don't know how far this is out, but I'm putting this out there that this is gonna happen. Mm -hmm. And then a day before Magma it hit Boom. me. This is what we're doing. Yep. So So we got the whole group together and we went to this cute little roller coaster kind of like carnival boardwalk thing in San Diego called Belmont Park where they have this beautiful wooden roller coaster, you know, the old fashioned style one that really like jerks you around. Yeah. And we got everyone there. <laughs> and we went and bought a ticket for everybody. And I was like, I'm like, I need ninety tickets, please. I mean, there's 16 of us, but the roller coaster was six tickets, whatever. Oh, this and we're is in line. Thing. We're in line, and there, we're, so we set our group intention was to heal somebody who wasn't here, heal, heal somebody who's related to someone in the group who's going through a rough time right now. And we start getting the energy high. We're stomping our feet, and we're clapping our hands while we're waiting in line. Magma, 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 magma. Boom, 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 boom. <laughs> It was so like good. we were literally building up the fiery like lava and then exploding it out of the tops of our heads before we even got on the roller coaster and we get up to the front of the line and there are exactly 16 seats left in in the car, in the car. for the roller coaster exactly the right number of seats for all of us so we all piled in Sick. and Amazing. it was like some people's first roller coaster in five plus years how many for you? Uh, easily 10. Oh my god. Yeah. Audrey? Uh, Jeez. Maybe more yeah. like 15. One person had never ridden a roller Sarah coaster Hyatt's before. Roller oh, she was ride. so cute. Yeah, she was. And so what did you guys feel on that roller coaster? Oh my god. I felt like, like, you know when you turn a rain stick over and it makes a sound and it does whatever? I felt that coming in through the top of my head and then like through my hands. When my hands wow. were in the air, it was like, like so tingly and glowy and sparkly and terrifying and magic and really wow. cool. Really, really cool. I so felt yeah. like I was riding a dragon. Ooh, like yeah. I had gone straight into somewhere magical yes. and I was riding an actual dragon. Amazing. We should open an amusement park. What do you think? Like a volcano amusement park? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god, yeah. I sure. that. Okay. Yeah. 2025, yeah. I'd say. Yeah. Ryan? With hot tubs so, for their Ryan, animals. you turned into like Peter Pan after you got <laughs> off that roller coaster. You, you, started, you started like dancing from table to table and like you know just like cavorting around all of us like a it had been it had been this intense <laughs> oh, and amazing four you were days really hyper last I was really cute. Hyper after that it was I really really cute. think I have not been on a roller coaster maybe in 18 years wow it has been a long oh, time and I love them I love that feeling and on that particular roller coaster last night 
we it didn't look like you know it doesn't look oh. like oh this is gonna be crazy yeah, you're yeah. gonna it be like you know like it looks it like a little yes. kid roller coaster all wooden all old school but there were numerous times that my butt was off the chair yep. I was, I was yeah. floating in the air kind of free flying a little bit <laughs> luckily there was a bar there and I felt so just free and alive I felt so alive I had forgotten what it feels like to have that come from an external I've been able to bring that in my own life but to experience that in a way that it comes from something that you're not in control of at yes. all somebody yeah. else is in control of that ride yes. and what yeah. you're in control yeah. of is making the choice to feel that free oh, it was it was yes. amazing it's I like you can either amazing. resist or you can let go and surrender yeah. Um, and I have to tell you that guys, like guys, of magma, not a roller coaster. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, a manifestation just came true on my Facebook Messenger. I just got a notification that popped up from a very beloved friend of mine who I met when I was woofing in Italy eight years ago. We spent about six weeks together, no, about two months together, um, working on organic farms together in Italy, and we just connected so deeply. And she lives in Amsterdam. And we've never been able to reconnect since then. And she just sent me a message saying, I really hope to see you in Amsterdam this September. Oh! <laughs> Drop mic. Guess what we've been talking about? Oh my God. Making a trip to Amsterdam, either before or after Magma. It's going to happen now. It has to. i got to go see Mert. Well, Mert, Mert. I miss you, Mert. I love you. Mert, Mert come to Berlin. Her name's Mirta, but I call come her Come to Mert. Berlin. Um, well... She has two little babies, but maybe she can come to Berlin. I'll yeah. invite her. She's not far from Berlin. How many, so. how many moms with two little babies came to Magma? Lots. Well, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Exactly. If you so, want something, you make it happen. I'll talk to her about it. I, yeah, I don't know if she's watching right now, but I just got a message from her. So, guys, Euro Magma, September 2018. Get your tickets soon. <laughs> All right, that's it for us today, guys. Thanks for watching. We love you, Trina. Who else is watching? Love you. Lauren McDonald, Robin, Jeff, Kim, we love you guys!